This season is the first time we're having a recorded podcast, like video recorded, so we're really excited about that. Today we wanted to talk a little bit about Texas. It's funny because you and I both were born and raised on the West Coast. Didn't meet there. Didn't meet there, but we met in Texas, and we both have very similar feelings about Texas. How did you make it to Texas? Ripping off the band-aid and gonna tell everybody right from the get that I was married before. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And so are you. Suddenly this feels like a, a, <laughs> a, talk, show. a talk show like on Oprah or you something. You are not the father. <laughs> okay, yeah, I knew I knew. <laughs> Did that, you know uh, you weren't the father? I knew I okay. wasn't the first one. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> anyway, we really just wanted to make a change and get out of California. And I was a stay-at-home mom for a lot of years. Can you imagine me as a stay-at-home mom? How long ago did you move here to uh, Texas? Almost 20 years. 20 years, okay. Yeah. Uh, Noah was three, mm -hmm. and he's 22. Yeah. So, yeah, we uh, had... An option we could go anywhere we wanted. Uh, my ex-husband Michael, you'll you'll hear his name during this con contest. During Michael, you'll hear his name during this. Is this a contest? Podcast. Yeah. He always worked from home. Yeah. So we could go anywhere. So we kind of looked at like North Carolina, which is weird because you live there too. True. We looked at Florida, and we looked at Texas. And he had a coworker that lived in Kaufman County. And, is that Texas? Uh-huh. Okay. And he was saying, go to Collin County. All the happenings are happening in Collin County. Oh, he was right. 20 years ago. Yeah, he knew. So we started looking and we ended up in Prosper, Texas. And all of my kids went uh, K through 12. Mm -hmm. Prosper, except for Lily. We recently pulled her out for homeschool. But yeah, it, it just he could work from home so it didn't matter where we went so we were looking for like a bigger house sealing the deal for me to be able to stay home and raise our kids we wanted one more kid sure. you know so the possibility of one more kid so we made the move and never looked back remember you also telling me that part of the reason you guys moved it to, because michael was traveling so yes. much like texas is a really good central place had a great airport which i i never really thought of before well before i moved to texas i wasn't really like um a tra well, I'd never flown on an airplane. <laughs> well, I guess maybe once before. But so that never really occurred to me that that would be a reason to move somewhere just being centrally located. And But it is nice. We can go to the West Coast or the East Coast right about the there. same amount of time. And direct flights. Direct flights, yeah, straight from Dallas. What a pain when we drive, or when we drive, when we want to fly back to your hometown. Mm -hmm. It's like you can go to this airport, that airport, or that airport, and they're all like two and a half, three hours away. Yeah. There's nothing as convenient as 45 minutes to one of the biggest airports in the land. I've never actually asked you this before. So you know me better so than So coming anyone. from California. You'd probably know the answer. What are some things right off the bat that you hated about it? Hated? I don't think I did. You didn't I dislike no. anything about it. Well, not as pretty. Yeah. I remember feeling kind of landlocked. Mm -hmm. I remember that feeling because, you know, we were, we could go to the beach, we'd go to the mountains. We were in Northern California. I moved from the Sacramento area. Yeah. So... Lots of trees. Sacramento is known for trees. I felt like it was kind of bare here. I had that same feeling moving from Oregon originally. Well, so from Oregon to like North Carolina and then to Texas, Oregon and North Carolina, they have like very similar oh, really? mountainous evergreen, you know, so kind you of trees. So you didn't have that feeling of longing yet. No, no. When I was in, when I was in North Carolina, it was, well, apart from the heat and the humidity, was beyond what anything I'd ever experienced before. Especially coming from Oregon. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. What did you know about humidity? Nothing. So that didn't really bother me. But when I moved to Texas, I remember even on the drive in here. You're like, oh, I'm great. Like, driving yeah. along like, this is flat. <laughs> this is flat. <laughs> yeah, there is one uh, part kind of near our old house where you, it's kind of elevated. Mm -hmm. And to give y'all an idea of how flat Texas is, you could see... I don't know, four, six water towers. Oh, it's way for more different than towns. That. Oh no, no, no! It's way it's more, more than, than that. that. Yeah, I think once upon a time I counted like ten. What? Yeah, you can see. I didn't realize that. Well, yeah, because it's different towns and some even different neighborhoods. But like, it's so flat that that's how many you wide can see. It's you just can like, see. Bop, 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 bop. Yeah. And we're talking about a hill. It's like yeah. a glorified speed bump kind of. So I'm originally from San Francisco. So talk about hills. Yeah. Oh gosh, that is and hill landscape. valley landscape. Because, I mean, people, it's a city. I remember the first time bit. we went to, to San Francisco. <laughs> I had never been there before. My time with you going there and the kids, we went on a road trip from Texas up to never again Southern Oregon. And we stopped through in San Francisco. And this was my first experience driving in there. Okay, the San Francisco folks are crazy. You those, were so worried we were going to flip on that hill. Those hills are so steep. You feel like you're on a roller, you know when you're, you're on like, a roller coaster and you're like, yes. like yes. that's what it felt like. Like 
you're not looking at the road in front of you. You're just looking at like the trees that are lined on either side. You cannot see the road yes. going in front. That's how steep these are. Yes. And we had like all the kids in the back and like all the equipment was in the back. We were carrying thing. a rooftop. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, this is crazy. I like, remember you saying like nobody else, but nobody else here has a rooftop luggage holder. Like that was going to be the deciding factor in tipping us over. <laughs> I mean, that's how steep the hills were. Hills were. I could not believe it. And then it crossed my mind. People are driving stick shifts in San Francisco. My parents. Asinine. <laughs> can you we imagine? Made it. <laughs> can you imagine starting the car and going from neutral to first gear on an incline like this? Talking about having like having to learn how to drive, boy, that gotta is, really tease it. That is literally trial by fire. Uh, I remember the one time that I had to drive. We had a Subaru stick shift, your very first like car that you bought on oh, your oh, own. Oh, yeah. I thought you were talking about San Francisco. Oh, stuff. no. I didn't. I never really drove there. I mean, I would visit and drive there, but yeah. we moved out of the city before I had my driver's license. Yep. But I remember coming back and I was like all frazzled because that's hard. Like if you're not used to, and that, and we're flat here. And we're flat here. Yeah. Oh, you when I was teaching you how to drive. Yes. Stick. Yeah. <laughs> it can be pretty jarring. Just. <laughs> I remember the first time I had to go to the store. Without you. You and Lily and Maya. Yes. And we get back and we're like, we need to go to the chiropractor. <laughs> but we made it. <laughs> yeah. And nobody died. And nobody honked. I remember my favorite memory about that. You probably already know what I'm going to say about it. We're driving, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and the term grind your gears really pops up. So we're driving and Erica doesn't push in the clutch. So if you, so for those of you who don't know, if you're, when you're driving a stick shift, there's the gas pedal, there's the brake pedal, and then over on the left is the clutch. The far left is the clutch. So when you want to switch a gear, you have to push the clutch all the way in, switch the gear, and then uh, let off of the clutch while you're p pressing on the gas. Yeah, it's, you so, got to be way too coordinated. So these are your two feet. It's like me. clutch all the way in, and you have to ease off the clutch while you press in the gas. Mm -hmm. So... Erica forgot the little push in the clutch part. So she tries to shift <laughs> and it runs into the gears and it makes a horrific sound. A horrific sound. It is sound. the worst sound. And it feels bad it too. It feels really bad. Everything about <laughs> it is a bad experience and it's a little bit jarring. It's a little bit scary. And I was like, babe, you know, like that reaction. I'm like, babe. She's like, it wasn't like at just as much of a reaction. She's like, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm like, who else could it be? You're driving. Well, I wasn't ready to take responsibility, I guess. It was my fault. But it was shortly after that. I think we only had that stick shift Subaru maybe two years. I don't think it even lasted that long. And we were like, we got to trade this in. Yeah, it wasn't convenient because I thought Erica would be much, I, th I thought you would like take to it a lot faster old you dog know. new trick but you know you Didn't just weren't work. that you just weren't interested in doing it and it was just inconvenience because i had to drive everywhere and well we had another car too so we would just drive the other car so I we got rid of it it would just made much more sense to do an automatic so yeah that's way what better that's what we've been ever since even in the even in the flat lane i think maya here. would like to learn how to drive maya is our 20 year old she's kind of our more adventurous i would see, oh, i could see that she would want to have even that Noah skill maybe, yeah you know because he's so european oh yeah noah wants to travel all over the world and stick shift is uh, some rental car places in other countries you can't go to guatemala and not know how to drive a stick right yeah well you if have you wanted to, to know how yeah, to drive, drive yourself but when we're going we're not driving no 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 no. it is a wild I would, that would be place. terrible i would not want to do that yeah so you liked or you you when you got to texas for the first time you really disliked uh how flat it was and kind of feeling yeah. landlocked i felt like like we were i was having to give up a lot of like just natural beauty and i felt so silly for not having it appreciated that my whole life same because yeah, I, I grew up around it and it you was just it normal granted. yeah but then when I get here I'm like okay I like everything except yeah and the summer is brutal summer's really brutal the here. summer is yeah. long in North Texas it is dry and you don't though the weirdest thing for me Oof. is like because growing up in Oregon it would still get hot like like hot for us the humidity wasn't the same, but like you would still get hot, but you always had a little bit of reprieve at night. It would cool there down at no night. There is no breeze. No, it's st when it go when the sun goes down here in North Texas, it's still 85. It's still 90. Yeah. You it's know, so you're so just, you just different. sweat for like five, six months. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll start up here. I would say we're really in the thick of it in May. 
And we're not done with it till like November. Yeah, late May and then June is for sure. May, June, July, August, September, October. So six yeah. good months. Good, good, good five, six months. Yeah. Of really now we'll have sweat. some good days in there oh, where yeah. we're like, oh wow, hashtag blessed. I'm only, I'm only beating up a little bit. I'm not. Fully but we down call it the it. sweat train. Yeah, you're just on the sweat train. You get up, you're on the sweat train. From the time out, you get up, you walk outside, and before you get to your car, you're already dewy. You're already sweating a little bit. Yeah, during our live sales sometimes, because live sale nights can be hectic. You yeah. know, especially if our deliveries come late or if we have don't have all the staff we need or whatever. Big time. And during those live sales, people will compliment my skin or like my glow. Like I'm just sweating. It's just sweat. <laughs> But thank you. <laughs> so what did you like when you moved to Texas? So like you didn't like how flat it was. What were, what were some of those things I you mentioned Texas that you really culture. liked? I love Texas culture. Yeah. I love. Well, do you remember your first exposure to that kind of thing? You're like, man, I kind of like it here. Yeah. Uh, I was at the grocery store. I was at Tom Thumb in Frisco because that was my closest oh, yeah, grocery, was store grocery store. Besides Brookshire's. How far but, away is that? Uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, easy. 25 20 minutes. minutes. And there was country music while we shopped. Oh yeah, gotta be. And I thought this would never happen in California. Not where I'm from in California. No, yeah, I agree with it that. It was just, it's just the standard. Yeah. Not so much anymore. Texas has changed a lot, especially this county, because so many people have moved here from other places. So it's kind of yeah, washing out a little bit. It is, definitely. Uh, I love the accent. And I feel like I caught a lot of the accent. Well, I remember even, so when I moved here, the, my first job was at Discount Tire. Like a little tire shop, not a little tire, it's a tire shop chain. It's a little. big tire shop. <laughs> uh, the, each physical building is fairly small uh, in comparison to other like automotive places and whatnot. But there was Christian, it was Christian rock. And I was like, that's, what is this? That's pretty bold. Okay. Bible belt. Uh, but yeah, you are the belt buckle of the Bible belt here in, here in Dallas, I Texas. Did, I did notice that people and that was just common. would ask me what church we went to. That yeah. was common conversation. Yep. Do you raise your kids in church? Mm hmm. You know, and I was like, gosh, it's kind of none of your business. I just met you. Yeah, it is kind of weird. But I soon learned that Texans trust others that are churchgoers. Yeah. Like, that's just kind of how it is. Well, again, that's part of the culture. And it almost doesn't even really matter which church you go to. They just want to know that you're churchgoing. You belong. You're God-fearing. Yes. They just want to know that yes. you're on the same level. of yes. You believe in God? Yeah, okay, we're cool. Yeah. You know. And but at the I, time. That is changing a little bit, At though. the time, we did go to church. Yeah. But it was a church that wasn't a Baptist church. And mm -hmm. here it was all Baptist yeah. at the time. It's different now. But at the time it was, you know, FBC, First Baptist Church. Yeah. You know, or Prestonwood is a big church here. So, yeah, so we fit in okay that way. Um, I remember hearing my neighbor, Angie, with her very Texan accent, calling her kids in for dinner. Oh yeah, Cole and Kendall, come in here. Well, she didn't. She didn't ring the dinner bell. Yeah, did she? <laughs> you had a dinner bell. We did have a dinner bell, bell when we were growing <laughs> up. When we lived out in the country, uh, my mom had a, a triangle sort of dinner That's bell. That's funny. Yeah, my brother and I were always out playing in the creeks oh, and yeah. fields and stuff and whatnot. So yes, I, I only have maybe two memories of her actually ringing that bell, and I don't know if it was for a joke or if she if it, if was, it was real. Or not. Yeah, maybe I'll ask her about that. But I do remember, and she even brought it into our next house just as kind of like a. Memorial. Keep, yeah, keepsake memorial. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I remember my first exposure to Texas. I was just blown away by how hot it was and how everybody Relentless. how everybody else seemed to be fine. So it was, <laughs> I had a, 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 I think a, an even worse experience like first getting here because I got here and like at the beginning, the very beginning, like I started my job like day two or three of this record breaking stretch hundred days of or triple something. digit weather. Yeah. yeah, there was over a hundred days in a row of yeah. triple digit weather. I remember that. Plus you're in this in a building with running cars. So like our thermometer out there would regularly be like one fifteen, one nineteen, you know? And I'm out there, I am just Durant Tanner's a sweater. I'm a sweater. Anyway you slice it. In Oregon I was a sweater. I come here and I'm working outside, not acclimated to the weather, and I am just dripping, dripping, mm -hmm. dripping. I know you're supposed to be kind of like customer facing, you know, you get done with the car, you drive it up to them, you hand it to them, and I just must have looked like a dog boy, <laughs> just straight, here's your, you know, whatever, dripping all over their paperwork and everything. Sorry, I'm from out of town. Yeah, I'm uh, not acclimated yet, but so that was just, that was just crazy. I also feel like I remember being surprised 
that in this area there's not a ton to do that isn't shopping and eating. Not yet. Not yet. I think I think Prosper is still a little bit too far out. Where we live is just a little bit too far out from the no, main. No, even Frisco. Like it was Frisco, you can, you can do a little eat. bit more now. Like they can do you. There, there are some other activities. But I'm saying going when on, I first but, moved here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was something that I noticed was well because you'd never really lacking. lived in a small town before. No, but Frisco wasn't a small town. I'm talking about even like there just wasn't a lot to do. Yeah, nature is not that big here because of the weather being yeah. so brutal. Yeah, whether it's cold or hot. Um, I really feel like the hiking trails are very lacking. Yeah. There's not a lot of that. There's not a lot of hiking. There's just strolling. Yeah. And a zigzag to make it seem longer. Yeah. There's, there are lakes if Man you're a lake lakes. person, but I'm not really a lake person. Yeah, me either. So we spent a lot of time at our community pool. I remember going and sitting there and hoping to make friends at the pool because <laughs> I moved here and I knew our realtor and that was it. I'm sure it didn't take you long though to uh, No, I'm a, a pretty friends. friendly person, but you know, I'm kind of picky. Oh. And uh, I remember feeling like people just automatically assumed we were loaded because we moved from California, but there wasn't a negative. Mm. People didn't hate Californians yet. Now yeah, so, they do. Yeah. Right now, a lot of people that are moving to the area the locals are not very fond of a lot of the people that are moving in. Mm -hmm. um, so there's kind of our like, certain town, our, our town is kind of going through that right now for sure. There's some growing pains yeah. for sure. And they want to keep Texas culture as Texas culture. And so I can't blame them for that. I mean, either I can't blame them for that. You know, it, to some degree, you know, I think that culture is important. It's hard to move to, I don't understand the mentality of moving somewhere new and not wanting to assimilate. Do you know what I mean? Like fighting yeah, to, it the whole well, time. Well, not necessarily assimilating, but fighting it. Right. Like, especially Texas. Yes. It's no mystery what Texas is like. Right. Everybody in the United States, heck, a lot of foreign people, like foreigners from other countries, know more about Texas than they do about the United States. True. That's like how much of a presence of, that's how well known Texas adventure. culture is. That's why. No, I'm just kidding. So like the fact that you would have the idea to come here and fight that is just wild to me. Just yeah. such a strong, it's probably the strongest culture of the United States. My argument might be, maybe be with like Hawaiian culture is super strong. Um, you know, there are different cultures within the United States that are strong, but like as a state, like Texas is pretty hard to beat for a strong culture. And the people that have been here, the natives that have been here are very proud. Yeah. Texas native, you know, oh. Well, that's rooted in history too. Like with the Alamo and like everything totally. it took to like have Texas and yeah. be the state that Texas is, yeah. you know, it took a lot of sacrifice. And I think people are invested in that, even if they weren't yeah. actually there or, you know, it's the history of it. It kind of gives you more pride to a lot of tough, have been born and raised in Texas. A lot of Texas. toughies, you know? A lot of tough Texans, yeah. And there's a saying that every Texan loves Texas, right? So yeah. like if a couple gets together in college and one of them's from Texas, they're going to have a stint in they're Texas. They're probably going to move to Texas at, at some, some point. point. Yeah. yeah. They all they usually kind of find their way back eventually. Yeah. Texans always try to find their way back home. Do you have any Tex, uh, like sayings that you have learned being in Texas that you really, really like, or you just thought were super funny? I mean, I know I have a few I'll of them. say stuff on the regular and like, I'll, text it to Chrissy and she'll be like, what do you mean? Like, she yeah, doesn't this understand. is kind of a hard one for me. To, I was just thinking about this, like, because I know that there are a lot of Texas or just Southern sayings in general, I think that I've taken on, mm -hmm. but they're just so part of my vo vocabulary. I don't realize that they're Texan. But we're on anymore. social media a lot and people will point stuff That's out true. Yeah, they and do. then you're like, oh yeah, that is, that is pretty Texan. a Southern saying, or that is Texan. You I'll know? tell you the funniest Text the funniest Texas saying I have ever heard. Wasn't that long ago. It was only a couple of years ago. I'm driving down the road, listening oh listening to the radio. I listen to like a talk radio, like a sports talk radio. And they were talking about this experience. Actually, I think it was after a Super Bowl or something. There was some big sporting event that these radio show hosts were in this major city for. And they're like, yeah, after the game, we went to this bar. And it was, so, and they're talking about how crowded it is. It was just so crowded. He's like, we went to this, we went to this bar after the game and it was just nut to button there. <laughs> and I remember just driving down the road being in tears. 
And it's just the funniest. So funny. the, and it's, what a great yeah, depiction. You know exactly depiction. what's happening. It's nut to butt. What about man. driving? It's balls to the walls, man. Full as a tick. <laughs> <laughs> After we leave Babe's Chicken. That was a really, really good Full one. Full as a tick. Full as a tick. Um, what about the corn one? I couldn't hit her with a handful of corn. If someone's real skinny. If someone's really skinny, couldn't hit her with a handful of corn. Uh, that's a really Southern saying. I heard this one recently. If brains were leather, you couldn't <laughs> saddle a flea, something like that. That's so funny. Where do you come up with How this How do of people stuff? come up with this? There are just endless, hilarious Southern sayings. All in all, Texas has been very good to us. The only thing that I don't really care for about Texas is the, is Lack the scenery. Of landscape. And I know everybody who loves Texas is going to come. Well, have you ever been to West Texas? Have <laughs> well, you ever been to East Texas? What about the beach? To, have you ever what been to... I know Texas is big and there are some beautiful places of the state. I'm talking about specifically where we live is not very pretty. It ain't that in, pretty. In my opinion. But that's how our business people, was born too. True. But a lot of other people do think it was that ugly this area outside. of Texas is pretty. Mm. I'm not one of those people. Don't hold it against me. I don't have to think something's pretty. I think It's just the way it is. I think it's very bizarre here how everything is so new. Yeah. And that's why I'm so drawn to like our building or where the plant shop is. It's a little is. bit older. It's an old building. Yeah, that was something that really turned me off when I moved to Texas. <clears throat> Everywhere that I had lived previously was all... You would have some homes that look similar, of course, but there were there was variety. Character. There was variety. There's character. Yes. yes. When I moved to Texas, I remember complaining about that. this to you very, very early on. You drive down a Texas neighborhood, every house is identical. Sticks and bricks. And I'm not talking about oh they look fairly the same. No, I'm talking about identical. They're not identical, but they're they're all brick. Yeah. There's like three builders in the whole freaking area, and so you're gonna have a couple of floor plans. Like you remember so. I've done so many in-home consults for house plants. Like I can just ask them, who built your house? And I know the layout of their house. Oh, you want a plant in that area? I already know what your lighting is. It's always the same. It's the same yeah. layout as everybody else in your neighborhood. The stairwell. Yep, the stairwells <laughs> with the thing going on. The, do you have the window above the, did you, did you splurge for the, the window <laughs> above the door or not? Yeah. You, know, you can ask these questions. And I know everything about their house because yeah. I've, I've been in one, I've been in all of them. Yeah. And it's just, and when there's no variety maybe you choose a different shade of brick but that's about it and i thought that was just so boring well he likes the you like the um painted like siding houses. Well, like have some have some have some some pride in it like i understand but a brick, lot of people think brick is i mean that's a skill that's not cheap. no it totally is no it, it's that's masonry. not what i'm saying like, i understand I understand 100 percent. but like there's no character. There's no artistry to it. But at Christmas it. time, there's no nothing. Or when we get a snow and every house looks like a little gingerbread house, that's pretty cute. I, guess. I don't mind the brick houses. I don't mind that at all. But people are painting them now. They're not really brick color anymore. They're white. Yeah, some they're black. HLAs are letting them paint them. They're up. gray. You but know? I'm telling you what, like I just I couldn't believe how many people are just fine just looking. Like but it's everybody also else tornadoes, so brick is hardier. Sure. Right. Sure. So. You know, I think that's the mindset. And it's a good insulator for hot and cold, right? Not that good here because... I couldn't tell you. I don't really know the, the specifics of that material. <laughs> when our heat went out here, we're at our shipping facility. This is Tanner's studio yeah. at our shipping facility. Um, and it's cold. And it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. We have a little space heater going. You know, I know that there's a lot of practical reasons for the brick and it's whatever. It is what it is. But I was just I just remember being super shocked. Very similar. When... I was first exposed to that was just like everybody's house is the same that was so weird to me yeah another thing i really liked about texas was just how welcoming the people used to be it's not like that anymore not as much but i was able to have that experience yeah i was able to have that experience as well mm -hmm. and that was just a short 10 10 years ago that i moved mm -hmm. that i moved to texas it's really kind of not like that anymore y yeah no not as much is that us <laughs> yeah i think we're not that friendly. is it me that's not that friendly anymore i didn't pass it along sorry about I that i don't know why but we're like, friendly in our store. Oh, and I was going to say, I feel like where we live, we're super friendly to our neighbors as well. That is actually one thing uh, that I like about living in the RV. The camaraderie. Well, everywhere else that we've lived to this point, you know, we've had neighbors on either side of us and never know. We knew one of them. Oh, yeah. We knew one of them, like, kind of. Like, we didn't, like, hang out a lot or anything, but we, you know, would chat when we saw them outside. Other than that, we never talked to any but of them. But here, we moved into our RV mm -hmm. in April. We're going on a year. Can yeah, you believe it's getting that? There. Yeah, we need right. to go January. have. Wow. We need to have it inspected before the warranty. Be a full year in that thing. Yeah. That's crazy. Because there's not so much space inside, in order to make it, 
because we have maybe 400 square feet, maybe more, mm -hmm. but we don't use a whole bedroom and a whole bathroom. Yeah. Because it's two bedroom, Probably two bathroom. Probably another 100 square feet. -ish. Yeah, so we, we live in amongst about 300 square feet, I would say. Yeah. The way you survive living in such small space is you spend a lot of time outside. It's fine with me. Fine with me. That's we, my favorite part about it. We enjoy it. We enjoy it a lot. But we've gotten to know a lot of the neighbors. We talk with our neighbors all the we time We see now. them at the hot tub. We rely on each other. Yes. <laughs> we're like a little community. We're going to help each other get through whatever weather event we're having. Mm -hmm. We've had to go uh, shelter in place with them whenever oh, we yeah. had More than once. a tornado warning. or Yeah, and it's great. I do feel like we know them better than any of our other neighbors, which is so weird. Yeah. Because we've only been there not even a year. Mm -hmm. But we know everyone. Really, really well. And they know us. <laughs> for better or for worse. <laughs> we're always the people coming in late. Yeah. And making noise when we're trying to get into our RV. Yeah, uh, we definitely keep some later hours than the majority. All the beeps the and the doors. And <laughs> yes, everyone else is asleep around us. Sorry about that. Yeah, we apologize. <laughs> but it's been great. I really, I like the RV. I feel cozy. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. I wish it wasn't a 25-minute drive from Prosper, though. I wish the air conditioning wasn't so loud. The AC is very loud. We need to put that on our list of things to uh, look into switching out before the sweat train happens again so, here soon. So overall, are you happy you moved to Texas? Definitely. Well, I met you. Even if I hated everything, this is where we met and this is where our story began. That's right. So. But you're just, but do you like just Texas in general? Yeah. I don't think I'll be, I know we won't be here forever, but uh, I think it'll always be home. I did it. It did its job. It did it its did. job. Yeah. Yeah. We both kind of see ourselves as, we're not, obviously we're not Texans, you know, because we weren't born or raised here. But. but if somebody, if I'm traveling to Oregon and they're like, where are you from? I say Texas. Yeah, I say Texas. Because if I say California, I don't feel like I fit in with the idea that is California at this point. True. Because um, I've lived in Texas for 20 years. Yeah. So, and I do like it here. I feel like the people in general are really friendly. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great place to own a business. Of any state, yeah, I would no, it pick is really Texas good, for sure. And that just it's happened to be—that's just a coincidence, you know. Look, yeah, but we we have our little network of friends and our customers that are so supportive and kind, and I love Texas. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you for being on this episode of the May December podcast. We might have to name it something else. Yeah, um, they really ruined our name with that Netflix show that came on. It's tradition on my show where the host. Uh, always gets a kiss from the guest. Tanner the Planner! So you're my, you're my <laughs> guest. Mm. <laughs> you better not have any other guests. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> you're it. Deal. <laughs>